Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Rap Church Daily Ministry. We are your vessels for the word today. Um, today, we kind of wanted to dive in something. Uh, it was a little bit off of what my original plan was, but you know, that's how the Holy Ghost be sometimes. So um, today, our topic is about uh, the poor and the needy. And I just want to start off by saying a huge shout out to Hope City. Um, it was an honor and privilege to be a part of all that today, uh, every Wednesday. They really are, they're really out there doing it, Chase. They're really out there doing it, people. Hope, it's a Hope City, KC. Um, they're really out there feeding the needy, feeding the poor, um, taking care of their needs. Uh, hundreds of families getting grocery bags full of food to help supply for their family. They are a soup kitchen, they're a homeless shelter, and they're in a food pantry, and they're a church, all in one. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say a huge shout out to them and honor them, because it's an absolute privilege Crazy. to be able to serve in any way, shape, or form, and just to see what is happening in the inner cities. This is in the middle of the ghettos, this is in the middle of the poor. People are just lining up and getting basic necessities to get through the week. So big shout out to them. Um, the Lord really put it on my heart to go through some scriptures to sh show you like what is happening at Hope KC is something that the Lord is very pleased with. And he wants his body, his church um, to be more generous when it comes to giving back to the poor, the ones who don't really have a say. They don't really have a voice. Um, they don't really have the opportunities to be able to be a part of community. So we kind of just switched it. I was following what the Holy Spirit was highlighting. So. Uh, we're going to dive right into the scriptures. You know how it goes here at the Rap Church Ministries. Chase, do the honors, my friend. Yes, the first scripture is coming out of the um, book of Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 31st verse, if you have your Bibles open. Um, it says, whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. So whoever oppresses the poor, and that can be in any, like, that can be in any way. It doesn't yeah. have to really... It can also be like um, in your mind too. The first thing I think of is like when you drive past a homeless person and, yeah. like, and you just have that like a scoff, like scoffers. Right. Um, even that level of of just like overlooking them and just kind of thinking you're above them just because of your situation when we all know who controls the situation. Exactly. Um, so whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. So you're in wow. conflict with the, the creator of the universe, our Lord God and... Um, the Almighty, the Sovereign One, like you're in conflict with Him when you when you scoff at the poor, at the poor, and when when like Miguel said, when you do these things like um, helping the needy, make getting grocery bags ready, all that stuff. That's something that really honors God. It really pleases Him when you're mm -hmm. kind to the needy. Definitely, um, and we have some testimonies to that as well. Um, Definitely, and we'll get into that for sure, our own personal stories. But um, I just love how it says. But whoever is kind to the needy honors God. God's not saying whoever gives a thousand dollars to the needy. He's just saying take the time to be kind to them. And what is kindness? One of the spirits of the. Oh yeah. One of the yeah, seven. Yeah. Fruits the fruits of the, of the spirit. spirit. So it's not like. So first of all, yeah. Whoever is kind to the needy honors God. He's not asking you to give your whole bank account every time you see a homeless person. I mean, he's not expecting you to get out of the car and give them all your money. He's literally saying whoever is kind to the needy that honors him. That shows respect towards him. Because why, Chase? Because why, people? Every single one of them are one of a creation of God. He loves every single one of his children. He loves them unconditionally. He loves them just as much as he loves me. That dude that's just out there just hoping that he can get some food for the day. Mm -hmm. um, he loves that person just as much as you and me. And he just wants someone to show them kindness, to speak up for them. Because no one's there for them. They're literally just beggars because i mean yeah they've probably made some unfortunate choices but that does not give us the right to judge them or to speak down on them or as the word says oppress them because that actually is showing disrespect to god so i just thought that was kind of cool seeing that it's like it's not being always generous with your money you know or even any tangible item it yeah. could literally be a hello a hi like acknowledging yeah. them as a person like exactly um saying a prayer for them like generosity in the spirit goes a long way yeah exactly um, so I'm going to dive into the next scripture and then we're going to share a personal testimony. So this is also from Proverbs. I, anyone that hasn't been able to dive into the book of Proverbs, I really recommend Glenn, it. Um, bring the camera closer. Yeah. If you haven't, or right here, if you haven't read the Bible, start in Proverbs yes, and just the good. simple over and over the wisdom yep. and the generosity that's in Proverbs, just start there. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Exactly. Um, it'll really uh, soften your heart too, to have a heart for the poor. Because um, we're going to go through, you're going to notice through these scriptures, 
first of all, I mean, if, if you haven't read your Bible, like you said, that's a great place to start. A lot of knowledge and wisdom to uh, help you to see what is pleasing in the Lord's sight. But uh, we only, the scriptures that we got today don't do justice of the heart of God mm -hmm. towards the poor and towards the weak and towards the one who don't really have the opportunity to do the same things that some of us may do um, that get overlooked by society. But he has such a heart for the poor and blessed are the poor. There's the kingdom of heaven. The that's what, the, that's what the Lord says. So um, we're going to dive in here to Proverbs 19, 17. So the word of God says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to God, lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. So when you do see that poor person on the side of the street and you're just, you feel a conviction, you're like, maybe I should just give them something. You're not just only helping that person. It's not only honoring God as the last scripture said, you are actually lending to the Lord by making that sacrifice and doing it with a kind and generous heart, by the way. I don't know if we highlighted those scriptures, but it's like, don't feel obligated and then give and be like with a grudged heart. Mm. That's not pleasing mm. to the Lord either. If you're like, okay, I got to give him $5. I can't believe like he's out here being poor, but I, I got stacked. So I'm just going to throw him a five. He should be fine. No, it's like God loves a glad heart, a uh, generous heart and like happy to be able to give and it's to an sow. Offering. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's really a sacrifice. Like our finances, all of it, like our lives, all of it. Like he, the Lord is pleased when we put everything in his hands. And if we can help someone out by lending them an uh, actual hand of kindness and goodness and just being able to have a conversation with them, um, that's pleasing to him. But in this one, I'm just seeing it as, hey, you lended to the poor $20 and it kind of was like, wow, this feels good. Like just to see how they react too. That's mm -hmm. always the best part. If you've never really had, I know all of us have done it. <laughs> like, I know everyone's going to hear this. Like, wow, I've drove past a lot of poor people. So I'm just speaking to you right now. If you never had the courage and actually acted on the conviction, because you don't even lie to yourself. I won't lie to myself. We've all done it. We've drove past. But we all feel conviction. That is something that you can't deny. I can't deny. Chase can't deny. So if there has never been a time where you acted on that conviction, I dare you to get out of that car and give them even a bottle of water, a banana, and maybe $5, and see how that person reacts, see how that softens your heart and changes your heart. Especially knowing that now you're honoring God, and you're not just lending to the poor, you're actually lending to the Lord. And he will reward you for what you have done. Hallelujah. Right. And I think a good idea in this summer heat is like to even just throw a cooler, mm -hmm. and like if you know you're going to be driving around, like, or you're going places like throw a cooler in the back of your car with like six or eight waters and just make it a goal to give them out yeah uh, if you see somebody give them a couple bottles of water like you said and a banana like that stuff goes a long way or or canned food or like something that we've um tried to incorporate too is making like little little wrap bags you just wrap yeah. up those little plastic bags you know those you know that cupboard that has 57 plastic bags from every time you go to the grocery store and you have no idea what to do with them yeah fill them up with that's good. five ten dollars worth of stuff and just be able to give it to them to bless them and and like just no, knowing that they have a few things to get through the night is just is something that they need quite honestly yeah exactly um before we dive into the next scripture we're just going to share a quick personal testimony um you can ask chase it was kind of wild so I felt a huge overwhelming uh, conviction when I read the scripture. I didn't, we didn't bring the scripture with us on this, but it's about the ones where it's sell all your possessions, give it to the poor and you'll have a reward once again. And when I read that, you can even ask Chase. I'm like, Chase, we're giving up everything. We're going to go give it to the poor. Um, once again, this is not us boasting. I only boast in my weakness. All glory to God. I just wanted to share a personal testimony for you guys to see how it really shifts your heart and how especially when you realign it with the scriptures to see how it's pleasing to God. Taking even a couple hours just to go out into your community and help the poor in any way, shape, or form, it's really going to change you and it's going to be pleasing to God. So we gathered up clothes, like, because we're both like, dude, we got stuff we don't wear. And that was kind of still when it was rather cold a little bit, I believe, yeah. where people needed some like hoodies or whatnot. So we made some sandwiches. We put bottles of water. We got like duffel bags and we just went out to the city. I was really like, Chase, we got to go out there on this Sunday. We don't have a choice. I literally showed up on my like, Chase. We're going out there. Um, and it was crazy because we just followed the Holy Spirit. We went to Kansas City, a place that we've never been before. Literally, we're just driving, mm -hmm. um, following the Holy Spirit wherever he led us. And at first, we literally couldn't find any homeless people. Like, we couldn't find any people that were looking for help. Um, so we just kept believing. At one point, it's 
funny how the board works. I'm just being transparent over here. I'm just being honest. We're like, we're probably driving around for a good 20, 30 minutes. Just searching. Searching around. And we're like, bro, maybe this wasn't the day, you know? But you know how you start to lose faith? little faith you have. Oh, little faith. We literally heard that. But we're like, okay, we're just going to keep going for another five. And then after the five, still nothing. Right, this is how God works sometimes. Right before we turned around, we saw this dude. And we're like, this is it. Let's go. Uh, no, was it? I think it was two people under a bridge living in a yep. tent. They had a little tent paradise yes. set up. There's actually, yeah, there's like almost like a little community of like two to five people uh, gathered. So like, this is it. This is why the Lord brought us out here. Mm -hmm. So we parked the car. We brought our stuff. And this is why, like, you'll be shocked to see the hearts of these people. Because I'm sure a lot of us haven't had the chance to interact. We literally walked under this bridge where people were living in a tent. They had a grocery cart. Or just, you know, how it can be like that sometimes. And your heart just gets moved to see that they're living like this. But all we did was we gave them the stuff. We said, God bless you guys, said a prayer over them, you know, um, and simple, simple, simple stuff, stuff, basic you know? stuff. And um, the gratitude and the thankfulness that these people had, not just to receive what we've given them and what the Lord's given them, but just that even in the life that they live, they are just so thankful to be alive, to be breathing. And every single time that we met up with these people on this particular day, they had an unastounding love for mm -hmm. god they're Thanks. like we we're just like it's like can we pray for you and they're like absolutely we love jesus jesus is amazing praise god like we're thankful that you would do all this like and that's when i when i read these scriptures god has such a heart for them and his goal he really is he came for the poor mm -hmm. you know he came to speak to the poor and the poor is, is the kingdom of heaven like in the eyes of the world how they see the poor once again, his thoughts and his ways are way higher. He sees the poor as the ones that are going to inherit his kingdom. So once again, check your heart, you know, when, how you're looking at these people. Because um, a lot of times, I've seen crazy videos, like, where people will play tricks on homeless people mm. to get a laugh and to get a react. And trust me, there's going to be repercussions of those people. I pray grace and mercy over mm. them. But people will find, like, a way to prank the homeless, you know. And that's, trust me, in the eyes of the Lord, that is not pleasing whatsoever so it was amazing just to be able to have that opportunity once again to act on obedient faith and be like okay the lord's telling us we got to go give up our possessions and bring it to the poor take some time make some sandwiches whatever it may be mm -hmm. but to see their how grateful they are you know even in their position and in their situation um i believe that's why even in their situation they have hope they have right. faith they have love and at the end of the day that's what the lord's looking for obedience faith hope and love towards him um, that's why there's going to be the kingdom of heaven. Right. Praise God. It was an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. And it was attitude admirable to see like yeah. just how they, like they really kind of had more faith than that's we That's what I'm saying. Honest. It puts things into perspective too. And it was, uh, it was a like raise the bar because if you're standing on the side of the road eating a cup of applesauce, praising the Lord, it's like, what do we have? Yeah. To what excuse do we have? Like, oh, I'm tired from going to my job where I make money and then yeah. going back to my house where there's a roof over my head. You got your family. Laying in my bed where there's a warm blanket. And I'm not saying we have to be nomads with it, but it's like an hour a week, like 60 yeah. minutes a week. Trust me, we it's, all can progress in that area. Oh, yeah. And um, that's why, too. We, yeah, we're, trust me, we're not boasting at all. That's not what no. I'm saying. I just want to share personal testimonies. And even at Hope City, these people, like I said, coming straight off the streets. This is the ghetto. People are literally getting shot basically every night. It's it's bad. It's bad. But in the middle of all that, there is a light. There's a beacon. Mm. And to see how thankful these people are to just be able to get fed and to have people of God taking care of them and just saying a simple prayer, God bless you, peace and blessings to you and your family. They're so thankful, you know. And the fact that people in our city, in our community are taking time to give back to those people. It's an amazing thing to see, amazing thing to be a part of. And I would just recommend maybe contact some local churches in your community, whatever it may be. Right. Reach out and be like, hey, I'm trying to volunteer even exactly. at a soup kitchen or if the church has got something going on. Um, just to be able to interact with people that uh, aren't as well off as we are, to interact with them, to be kind with them. Once again, you don't have to like always just give all your money to them, which a lot of people are like, I'm not giving that person my money. They're going to go smoke and drink or whatever. Like I used to have that heart. I'm just being real with you. It's like, why would I give this homeless person 20 bucks? I just started thinking bad things about them because that's how they, they must have got there because they were spending their money on drugs. But what is pleasing to the Lord is that you have faith and you have the generous heart to give to them. What they do with that 20 bucks actually don't matter because you still acted on obedience 
So that's completely out of your hands. You did your part. You prayed over them. You blessed them. And whatever they do with that 20 bucks, the Lord's looking like, hey, my child has a generous heart toward the poor. I'm going to bless him. And 